Inside Hilltopper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Lynn Allum. Today, we welcome a newcomer to the Hilltopper coaching staff, um, recently hired. So I would like to formally introduce Sarah Pellegrin as our new head women's softball coach. So Sarah, welcome to West Liberty and what's your initial thoughts? is probably the best word right now. I, uh, I've just been welcomed with so much love um, in the past month that I've been here. And especially like going into season and like figuring all of the things out and really needing a lot of help getting everything going. Everyone has just been so welcoming and um, so like on board with helping me through everything. And I, I'm just grateful. Well, we're also grateful that you're here and you've been a hit so far. <laughs> Not that I'm here every day, but I see you at basketball games and People are, are very, very happy. I'm glad um, that's the reputation I'm getting. Yeah, well, that, that's a good thing. So kind of give us your background for people that didn't read the press release. Okay. Tell us where you've been. Where do you come from? Okay, so um, I'm actually a native of the Ohio Valley. I grew up in Harrison County, Ohio. Um, I went to West Virginia State for college and played down there for four years. Out of college, I got a GA spot at Wheeling University, and so um, I got my career started down there. Um, I got to be the GA for two years, head coach for three years. Um, I left and went up to Robert Morris to be the assistant coach up there. Um, I mainly focused on the pitching aspect of things. And then um, most recently, I was back at Wheeling for a year, and here I am. Where did you go to high school? I went to Harrison Central. Um, I got to bring this up. I coached at Lakeland High School. Oh, Are wow. you aware of Lakeland High School? Yeah, yeah. Everything merged way before my time. Yeah, so. right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for making me feel I, I, really, really <laughs> old. But uh, I actually did enjoy that section of Ohio and and being up there. So I had to throw the old Lakeland people a bone there to <laughs> no, to, to acknowledge that. them. So tell us a little bit about your coaching philosophy. Um, Let's start offensively. What is your philosophy? And I'll just give a couple ranges. Do you bunt a lot or are you a, as Don Clegg would know, Earl Weaver, longtime manager of the Baltimore Orioles that said, games are won with three run homers. So <laughs> what's your philosophy? Um, unselfishness is my philosophy. Whatever we need our uh, player to do when she is up to bat, that's what we expect. If she is traditionally a home run hitter, but we need a bunt down in, in a big situation, we're going to expect her to get that done. So we're not necessarily a long ball or a short ball. We're just a, we're going to play for the team. Um, we need to push more runs across the plate than the other team. And so whatever we have to do to get that to happen is what we want to happen. So you mentioned that you were primarily involved with the pitchers at Robert Morris. If you had an expertise, and this is, I'm really picking <laughs> your brain here. If people knew me, I had four All-American point guards or five All-American point guards. I'm kind of a, a point guard guy. Is okay. is pitching your thing or is that was just the role you had there? <laughs> no, pitching's my thing, defense in general. Um, I definitely, I definitely love that side of the game for sure. And so um, I have a hitting coach that comes up here and works with us. So, um, but yes, pitching is my thing. And that's what I'm really excited for about this year because we have a really good pitching staff um, that I think is going to hold the conference and our opponents to, uh, to a low enough runs that we can win some ball games. That pitching obviously in this sport is is vital um, <laughs> one of the things that we've really worked on here at West Liberty are our facilities so tell us a little bit about the softball facilities um, so I come from a place where we were playing on a uh, like a local city field so um, I'm just very fortunate to have a, a softball field to work with but um, I'm getting taught the ropes of how to uh, drag a field and maintenance all of that right now and I also something I've never had to do before <laughs> and so um, but it's cool I like that we are on campus and we can just walk down to practice at three o'clock today and being on the field by the way uh, today in February so early in February at that like that's amazing but anyways uh, 
Yeah, I, I love the softball field. I like that the, the fans get to be above the game at our complex. Like, they get to look down and, like, watch the game from above a little bit, and I, and I appreciate that for sure. Um, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of our field so far, and I think, like, with the upgrades that we have coming, it's, it's going to be one of the top places to play in our conference. Well, the upgrades that we have coming, and we've teased this a few times on other – um, shows that we've done due to the generosity of Belmont Savings Bank. Um, we're hoping to break ground very, very soon here in the next several months on a facility upgrade which will provide locker rooms, indoor batting cage, and that will really, really enhance what now will become the Belmont Savings Bank softball complex. Mm -hmm. We've got a great field. We're going to have state-of-the-art locker room batting cages, and we also are blessed to have an indoor facility. Oh, absolutely. I think that that's probably the biggest game changer is having an indoor facility here. When you're in the Northeast, it's kind of hard to get in our practices leading into our games that just start for us next week. And so um, it's huge for us to just go in the bubble and, and get what we need to get done. And for softball, it's perfect because we can fit a whole infield in there. We can we can work on exactly what we need to work on. And so um, I'm, I'm blessed right now. Like that's that's a great word to explain it. Like we, we got it going on here and, and it's gonna get better. And that's what I'm excited for too. Yeah, and I believe so too. And facilities are so important. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've always commended, um, I coached indoors. And, and I've mopped some floors and things, so I'm not above that. But I always said I am so glad I coached an indoor sport because you deal with the weather all the time. Yeah, I, I actually just joked around yesterday that I'm part-time softball coach, part-time weather woman, like with my five apps on my phone and like and like going through each of them. Okay, what's this one say? What's this one say? Can we practice today? Oh, Friday's not looking good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you're at the mercy of, and especially the northeast in the spring, with oh, the rain and absolutely. and the extreme temperature changes. Uh, Sunday, my wife was in Dallas this last week. And I believe it may have been warmer here mm -hmm. on Sunday than it was when she was in Dallas. So, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't envy being an outdoor sports coach. So kind of tell us you had referenced you opened up next week. What does the beginning of the season look like? Uh, so because we're up here, we have to go south to play some ball before our conference starts. So we are making a trip to Mount Olive, North Carolina, next weekend. Um, down there we're going to play them, and I believe it's uh, – South Carolina, Beaufort, haven't really looked into it very much. That's a next week problem for me. Um, and so we're going to go down there. We're going to play four games, um, come back. We have a couple double headers here and there, um, IUP and Seton Hill, I believe. And then we're going to go to um, on our spring trip, which is just kind of driving through the south a little bit, getting some double headers in, making our way back here, and just getting some ball um, against some good teams before our conference season opens up. And that's like when it's really time to play ball. When will that, not the exact date, but is that first um, week, second week of March? Typically halfway through March is when we start our conference season, yeah. And uh, there are some good softball teams in our conference, and of course West Liberty <laughs> is has kind of got a storied reputation in softball. They've We've had a really, really good program. So we are thrilled that you elected to come up here and, and join our program, and you've made a great first impression. And speaking on behalf of the athletic department and the university as a whole, we couldn't wish you any more luck, and we're excited for you. Um, last question, when you inherited a roster, and this isn't basketball where you have 12 to 15 kids on a team. How long did it take you to learn every kid's name? <laughs> um, something I also joked about was, hey, do you guys care if I like put name tags on you the first week of practice? <laughs> but honestly, um, I think it was probably four days in that I got them all. And But I also had them into my office one-on-one -on -one separately to get to know them a little bit that first week as well. So I think that that was kind of the game changer for me was to meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. And then um, I could place them a little bit better at practice. But right. And, now. and for you, you also had, and I did the same thing when I was hired as the basketball coach here like several centuries ago. <laughs> I got hired late September. School's already in session, and now you're doing everything on the fly. You've kind of done the same thing. The hiring process took a while. We get you in here right at the, as the semester's changing. So I'm sure that wasn't an easy task. Um, 
No, it's not easy, but I don't think anything ever is easy with coaching, right? <laughs> it's all it's always different. But something that I learned because I was in a similar situation last year at Wheeling was um, to invest in the relationship aspect with my players. And so that's why the one-on-ones happen. We did a team bonding overnight this past weekend. Like, um, just getting to know them more as, their, as them as human beings and not necessarily as softball players because um, when we're able to trust each other on a deeper level, we'll be able to really trust each other on the softball field. And, and that's what is uh, most important to me is building those relationships with them. Well, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule for us to kind of introduce you formally here on the air. Wish you luck next week as you get off to a good start. And uh, we'll have you back on here soon. Cool. Thank you. That wraps up Inside Hilltopper Athletics.